In the dim flicker of an era past, where shadows danced upon silver screens, there was a rendezvous, a meeting of minds with a tale that dared to delve into the depths of duality. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the very name itself conjures a twinge of curiosity and a shiver of apprehension. Can you still remember the first time those monochrome images unfurled before your eyes, like a secret whispered across time? Perhaps it was the eerie transformation scene that seared itself into your memory, the visceral contortion of a single man's soul manifesting as two distinct beings. Or was it the haunting notion that lingers, the struggle between light and darkness, virtue and depravity, all enveloped within the same skin? Did you, too, find yourself wandering through the labyrinthine corridors of your thoughts, pondering the thin line between good and evil? It's remarkable how certain moments, fractions of celluloid caught in the net of memory, continue to shape the way we perceive our own inner landscapes. The resonance of those flickering frames, frozen in time, echoes through the chambers of our minds, urging us to explore our own hidden depths. And now, as the echoes of history blend with the present, let us journey beyond the silver screen and into the realms of trivia, where the obscure and the fascinating converge. Delve with me into the obscure anecdotes, the whispered behind-the-scenes tales, and the curious connections that breathe life into the very fabric of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. From the unexpected inspirations that birthed the cinematic marvel to the untold stories that transpired during its production, the stage is set for a symphony of random facts that will awaken your fascination once more. So, are you prepared to lift the curtain on the enigmatic allure of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Let's venture forth into the realm of the unknown, where trivia dances hand in hand with history, and where the lines between fiction and reality blur in tantalizing harmony. For the tale of duality awaits, and the screen is yours to traverse once more. Evolution of character, unraveling the complexities of 1,941 seconds Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in the 1941 cinematic rendition of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a tale originally spun by Robert Louis Stevenson, one notable departure from the source material, and the 1931 film adaptation emerges through the character of Ivy Peterson. Contrary to Stevenson's novella, Ivy's presence was borrowed from the 1931 version and is nowhere to be found in the original narrative. Notably absent, too, is Jekyll's fiancée Beatrix Emery. These deviations, while subtle, underscore the malleability of storytelling in the hands of filmmakers. However, it's Spencer Tracy's portrayal of the enigmatic Hyde that almost took an intriguing turn. The esteemed actor yearned to embody Hyde's transformation sans heavy makeup. A noble endeavor, yet Tracy's test performance during the pivotal metamorphosis scene proved lacking in conviction, prompting a recourse to makeup to capture the essence of Hyde convincingly. The path from script to screen is often paved with such artistic choices and their revisions. The influence of the Hayes Code, that omnipresent moral compass of cinematic production, wielded its power over the 1941 rendition as well. This adaptation found itself diluted from the unrestrained 1931 version, particularly when it came to the character of Ivy Peterson, where once she inhabited the realm of a prostitute, under the Hayes Code's watchful eye, she transformed into a more acceptable, albeit still edgy, role as a barmaid. Such shifts reflect the tightrope filmmakers walked in adhering to industry standards while aiming to captivate audiences with a compelling narrative. The 1941 adaptation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a canvas upon which creative liberties danced alongside societal norms. Ivy Peterson's migration from the 1931 film Spencer Tracy's flirtation with makeup less transformation, and the Hayes Code's imprint on character portrayals collectively illustrate the dynamic interplay between storytelling, cinema, and the era's prevailing values. In this tug of war, the film emerges as a unique synthesis, paying homage to its origins while leaving an indelible mark of its own. Of its own. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a cinematic adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's iconic novella arrived on the silver screen in 1941, captivating audiences with its portrayal of duality and darkness. While the film showcased Spencer Tracy's remarkable acting talents, it was not without its share of controversy. Tracy's portrayal of the sinister Mr. Hyde faced criticism from 1,941 seconds discerning reviewers. 
Critics, with pens as sharp as surgical scalpels, deemed his performance inadequate, faulting his lack of fright-inducing intensity. Some felt that his portrayal lacked the bone-chilling terror that the character demanded. In an era where the silver screen was awash with heart-pounding performances, Trace's hide failed to fully evoke the spine-tingling fear that Muviegors craved. Interestingly, a transatlantic twist emerged, hinting at a cultural clash. Tracy, the embodiment of the quintessential American leading man, faced skepticism over his suitability to portray an upper-class Victorian London doctor. His distinctly American demeanor and rugged charm were seen as at odds with the refined sensibilities of the era and locale. Critics questioned whether Tracy's rough edges could convincingly mold into the polished facade of a high-society physician. In a twist of fate, an amusing exchange unfolded between Tracy and Frederick March, the star of the 1931 version of the film. A telegram arrived, bearing March's words that his portrayal of Hyde remained superior, even in the face of Tracy's iteration. This playful jab between the two actors highlighted the constant comparisons between the adaptations. Tracy's unease with his own performance became evident after he viewed the final cut. Conveying his worries to his confidante Ralph Bellamy, Tracy lamented that he believed his Hollywood journey had reached its end. Such was the depth of his concern that even Bellamy's reassurances could not mend the self-doubt that had crept in. A fleeting moment during filming saw acclaimed author W. Somerset Maugham's visit to the set. Observing Tracy's dual performance, Maugham's sardonic query echoed the story's very essence. Which one is he now, Jekyll or Hyde? This wry comment underscored the challenge of seamlessly shifting between the two contrasting personas. The film left an indelible mark on cinema history, solidifying the dual nature of Jekyll and Hyde in the annals of pop culture. Tracy's portrayal, though divisive, remains a unique testament to the evolving interpretations of Stevenson's timeless tale. Whether one found him terrifying enough or not, Spencer Tracy's Hyde brought an undeniably American twist to the dark streets of Victorian London. In the end, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of 1941, with its contentious casting and transatlantic nuances, proved that even the most acclaimed actors could struggle in the pursuit of duality and darkness on the silver screen. In a captivating twist of fate, the 1941 film Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde witnessed an unexpected switch in roles that reshaped its characters' destinies. Initially, Ingrid Bergman was slated to portray Beatrix Emery, while Lana Turner was set to embody Ivy Peterson. However, Bergman's conviction that Ivy's role held greater challenges led her to persuade the producers into a reversal of parts with Turner. This audacious maneuver not only redefined the characters' dynamics, but also showcased Bergman's keen insight into her craft. Amidst the intense emotions of the final scene between Lana Turner and Spencer Tracy, a unique incident unfolded on set. Turner, grappling with the inability to shed tears, faced the director's insistence to evoke the necessary emotion. Director Fleming's attempts to coax tears from Turner's eyes remained futile until a pivotal moment when, in a burst of determination, he grasped her arm forcefully. The physicality of this interaction, although unorthodox, ultimately achieved the desired emotional release, underscoring the lengths to which artists and directors can go to capture the perfect cinematic moment. As Hollywood's glitz and glamour intertwined, Spencer Tracy, the embodiment of Mr. Hyde, left an indelible mark on the annals of movie lore. The actor's unexpected appearance at the second wedding anniversary celebration of Clark Gable and Carol Lombard proved a surreal collision of fiction and reality. Wearing his makeup as Mr. Hyde, Tracy's presence lent an air of mystery and intrigue to the event, blurring the lines between the silver screen and the vibrant lives of Tinseltown's icons. The 1941 adaptation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde stands as a testament to the fluidity of artistic vision and the unpredictability that graces both the creative process and the lives of those who shape it. Through a fortuitous twist of fate, the film's characters found new life, emotions were summoned through unconventional means, and the real and real intertwined in a celebration of Hollywood's allure. As the credits rolled on this cinematic journey, the legacy of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde continued to evolve, driven not only by the narrative's duality, but by the very real twists of fate that marked its creation. 
And so, in the grand tapestry of Hollywood's history, this film remains a tantalizing reminder of the magic that ensues when the unexpected takes center stage. Center stage. Unveiling a cinematic enigma, missing lines in the 1941 Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde amid the shadows and transformations of the classic 1941 film Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. A puzzling cinematic anomaly lingers, etching its enigmatic mark on the silver screen. In the original theatrical rendition of this age-old tale, a pivotal scene unfolds as Dr. Jekyll's unsettling metamorphosis into Mr. Hyde reaches its zenith. A mirror in his dimly lit laboratory becomes both a vessel of transformation and a canvas of introspection. As Dr. Jekyll gazes into his own reflection, an unsettling dialogue emerges from the depths of his tortured psyche. It's my face, yet it isn't, he utters, peering at the disfigured countenance before him. A palpable unease hangs in the air as he murmurs, can this be evil? These haunting lines, like whispers from the abyss of duality, encapsulate the crux of the story's moral struggle. However, as the sands of time sifted through the reels, these poignant lines mysteriously vanished, leaving cinephiles and scholars perplexed. In subsequent TV prints and reproductions, the profound self-query and the chilling inquiry into the nature of evil were curiously absent, a gap in the narrative that defies easy explanation. Speculation abounds regarding this cinematic riddle. Was it a result of an inadvertent mishap, a damaged negative that robbed the scene of its psychological potency? Or was there a deliberate choice, a narrative shearing that veiled the depths of Dr. Jekyll's existential confrontation? The answers remain as elusive as Mr. Hyde himself. Through the lens of film history, this puzzling omission beckons us to reflect on the intricate tapestry of movie making. The inexplicable void invites us to contemplate the intricate balance between preservation and interpretation between the director's vision and the viewer's experience. The 1941 Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, an iconic portrayal of man's inner conflict, stands as a testament to the capricious nature of storytelling on celluloid. Its missing lines, like shadows dancing on the wall, remind us that the mysteries of cinema often mirror the enigmas within ourselves. So, as the decades roll on, one can't help but wonder, are these lines lost to the annals of time? buried beneath layers of film history, or do they reside in the secret chambers of our own collective consciousness? The answer, much like the essence of good and evil, might never be neatly confined. In this cinematic enigma, we find a reflection of our own quest for understanding, an inquiry that delves into the very heart of human nature, echoing Dr. Jekyll's own poignant words, can this be evil? Unveiling a truth shrouded in shadows, this is a tale that resonates not only on the silver screen, but within the recesses of our own souls, own souls, own souls. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, we find ourselves walking a fine line between the known and the hidden facets of our own selves. Just as Dr. Jekyll's potion revealed his duality, this 1941 cinematic masterpiece beckons us to explore the depths of our own shadows. It's a reflection of the dichotomy that resides in every individual, a mirror held up to our own hidden desires and suppressed fears. As the credits roll and the haunting melodies fade, take a moment to ponder which face of your own existence do you recognize in the haunting transformation of Dr. Jekyll? Have you, too, experienced moments when your inner struggles were painted on the canvas of reality? This isn't just a movie, it's a canvas where your own experiences and emotions can find a unique shade. Did you find solace in the eeriness, or did the movie become a mirror that urged you to confront your own duality? Were you captivated by the mastery of acting, the vintage charm of cinematography, or the timeless essence of the narrative? Whether it's the spine-tingling suspense or the psychological depths that resonated with you, your thoughts are a treasure trove waiting to be unveiled. So, dear connoisseur of the silver screen, let your reflections be heard. Share your favorite moments, your most intimate connections, and the ripples this movie has sent through the corridors of your mind. Let's weave a tapestry of interpretations, emotions, and shared experiences, binding the past with the present. Thank you for joining this voyage into the enigma that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Your time and contemplations are the stitches that sew the fabric of cinema's legacy. Until our thoughts converge once more, keep exploring, keep reflecting, and keep peering into the depths of your own duality, just like the characters that have graced the silver screen. Warm regards.